Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be doing a recent book haul. So, this book haul is going to be covering all the books that I acquired in the first three months of the year. I'm carrying on with my goal from 2018 of tracking all the books that I acquire and making a haul video every kind of three months slash every quarter of the year saying what books I have bought or acquired otherwise. I acquired more books than I intended to in the first three months of 2019. I acquired 15 books in the first quarter of this year, one of which was an audiobook, all the rest were physical, which is too many books really considering my general lack of space, so in the next quarter I'm gonna try and acquire less. But anyway, let me talk through the books that I have acquired in the last three months, most of which I haven't read yet, but a couple of which I have. So, I will start off with the review copies. Back in January, I was kindly sent to The Diary of Nobody by George and Whedon Grossmith for review by Pamela Mill and Collector's Library, an imprint which I absolutely love. I read this back in January and really enjoyed it. It is a late Victorian novel slash novella focusing on a lower middle class man and kind of all of the chaos that happens to him in his efforts to be respectable. It's very funny, very entertaining and definitely one I would recommend. I then also got sent for review Jal Aledin by Rafi, which is a late 19th century Armenian classic. I've also already read this, I read this in March and I spoke about it in my March wrap up. It looks at the effect of the Russo-Turkish war in the late 1870s on Armenian people and I have mixed feelings about. I kind of enjoyed some aspects of it but I felt that it was a little bit too short and that I didn't quite know enough about the history to really understand it, but regardless, an interesting read. I then have The Runaways by Fatima Bhutto. This is one that I'm really interested in getting to. This is set in Pakistan and England and follows three different people who are all trying to sort of escape from their life or build new and better lives for themselves. There was just something about this book that sounded quite interesting to me, so I'm really looking forward to reading this. Hopefully I will get to it at some point in the next few months. I then was also sent a review copy of Ruin's Wake by Patrick Edwards. This is a book that I'm really excited to get to. Um, I know Patrick Edwards, otherwise known to me as Paddy. He was on my creative writing masters course that I did a few years ago and I believe I read some of this book in much earlier stages so I'm really looking forward to reading this. It is a kind of science fiction dystopian novel about the interaction between three characters in a kind of totalitarian regime. I know that I love Paddy's writing a lot, I'm sure that this will be fantastic and I don't read that much science fiction but I always really really enjoy it when I read it so I'm really looking forward to picking this up soon. I think this might be one that I take on holiday with me in April. I then also have A Victorian Lady's Guide to Fashion and Beauty by Mimi Matthews. The publishers Pen and Sword very kindly sent me a review copy of this and I'm really looking forward to reading it. As you all know I'm a big fan of the Victorian period and I find them really really interesting. I also write lots of historical fiction set in the Victorian period and while I know a lot about the Victorian period I cannot get my head around the fashion because it changed like every five years and like the different points in the Victorian period where you were supposed to wear a crinoline or a bustle or neither and um, I can't get my head around so I think this will be really interesting because I think it will teach me lots of things. I'm also a big fan of pen and sword in general. They make a lot of very accessible quite short history books which is something I really enjoy because I love reading history books but often history books are like a thousand pages long and I don't always have the time to spare to read a thousand page long history book. So this I think will be really interesting. This is also really strongly recommended by Lil from Lil's Vintage World who really loved this so that's another reason why I'm keen to pick it up. The next four books are books that all come from my friend Ellie who was having a big clear out of her bookshelves and kept sending me pictures of books saying would you like this book would you like this book to which I said yes more times than perhaps I should have done but I'm really looking forward to all of these and actually there's a couple of books here which I would quite like to read but I'm not sure I was keen enough to read to buy myself among those would certainly be Normal People by Sally Rooney I've heard lots of great things about Sally Rooney everyone seems to love her Conversations with friends every time I hear about it, no matter how much people love it, it sounds really, really not for me. Normal people, I'm more on the fence on and that it sounds like it could be quite interesting. I think it's the kind of book where I'm not convinced enough that I will love it, that if it was really long, I probably wouldn't try it, but because it's quite short and because I've heard so many great things about it, even though I'm a bit skeptical about whether or not I will like Sally Rooney, I do think I'm going to read this and I hope that I will enjoy it. I believe it follows two people from their kind of teenage years into their young adulthood to have a kind of on and off friendship slash relationship. They come from very different sort of social backgrounds um, and they never quite managed to really make it work. It sounds quite interesting. So yeah, I'm gonna try this out. And then I also have The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock by Imogen Herways Gower. This is a historical fiction novel that I've heard some very good things about, especially from Marissa from Blatantly Bookish. And I don't know whether or not I would like it because I've also heard it compared a lot to The Crimson Petal and the White, which I don't love, but it's set in 18th century London um, and follows what happens when a man's ship is sold for what may or may not be a mermaid. 
sounds quite interesting and I've heard a lot of good things so yeah I'll give this a try. Next I have A Cat, A Man and Two Women by Junichiro Tanizaki. I don't know very much about this one but in general I enjoy Japanese fiction and I'm sort of running out of it on my shelves so this is definitely one that I'm going to be reading. And this I believe follows a married couple who are splitting up after the man kind of takes up with a different woman instead and how the couple like fight over who gets to keep the cat and then things go on from there. Anyway, I'm curious and I like Japanese fiction in general, so we'll see how it goes. And then Ellie also gave me The Gustav Sonata by Rose Tremaine, which I'm really excited for. I've heard a lot of very good things about this. It's set, I believe, just after the Second World War and follows two boys growing up who kind of share a friendship and maybe something more. I've heard fantastic things about this from Holly Dunn from Holly Dunn Design, so I'm really looking forward to getting to this soon, hopefully as part of the Recommendations Readathon, which I'm also hoping to read Sally Rooney's Normal People and... Um, the Mermaid of Mrs Hancock by Imogen Hermes Gowers for as well. I will link my TBR for that below. I also recently acquired Bookworm by Lucy Mangan, the subtitle of which is A Memoir of Childhood Reading. So we were having a kind of clear out of books at work. This isn't published by where I work, but we have like books by other publishers on our bookshelves at work as well. And this ha we happen to have more than one copy of this, so I took it home. I don't know very much about this, except that it is a memoir about childhood reading, which is something that unsurprisingly it will appeal to me um, so I think I'm going to save this for non-fiction November but I think this should be a good fun read. On to books I actually bought. The one audiobook I bought recently was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which was an absolutely incredible book that I really really loved which is a kind of a story within a story looking at the life of a kind of famous film star and the men and women who she loved. It's a really really wonderful novel that I just absolutely loved and yeah just fantastic. I then also acquired this, this is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield, which I still haven't read, which is ridiculous because I pre-ordered it back in May 2018 and it arrived like nearly three months ago now. This is my anti most anticipated book for years. Diane Setterfield is a fantastic writer, her novel The Thirteenth Tale is my favourite contemporary novel of all time. And I think I'm so excited for this book that I can't bear to start it because I keep being like, what if I don't have the right time to dedicate to it? So I think this is another one that I'm going to take on holiday with me in April because I want to give this like proper dedicated time and really just sink my teeth into it because I know I'm going to love it so much and I'm really really excited to read it but for some reason I just yeah I think I haven't got to it yet because I'm worried about like not giving it the time it deserves but yeah I'm very excited about this. I then have two Japanese novellas which I bought. This is Spring Garden by Tomoka Shibasaki and this is Showboat by Hidoa Furukawa. I read Spring Garden back in March and found it intriguing but not necessarily that compelling. I, not that much happened and I couldn't quite find the focus of it if you see what I mean but it follows kind of a man um, living in a block of flats um, that's soon to be demolished and his kind of friendship with another woman who lives in the block of flats. And this one's Slow Boat, I've yet to read, but it sounds really interesting. It follows a man in Tokyo kind of looking back on his life and his regrets and mistakes, especially in past relationships, which just sounds interesting. In general, I quite often enjoy fiction translated from Japanese, especially when it's realist rather than magic realist, and I'm trying to kind of gather together more Japanese fiction to read so I'm looking forward to this one too. And finally I have News From Nowhere by William Morris which I acquired on the way to the recent booktuber meetup at the Penguin Classics pop-up shop that was open for a week in Shoreditch and was incredible and I wish was there the whole year round. Genuinely if there was a Penguin Classics bookshop open the whole year round I would go in every week and I would probably buy something every week so maybe I should be glad that it's not there all the time because I would just buy everything but also I wish it was there all the time. I have been meaning to read News From Nowhere for a really long time. It is William Morris's science fiction novel about a kind of socialist utopia in the year 2102. And I believe it's about a Victorian man who is sort of transported into this future year. William Morris is a writer and a figure that I find really, really interesting. I really love his design, um, both kind of textiles and furniture, as well as his writing um, from what I have read so far. I think this might be one I end up saving for Victoria, but we'll see. Regardless, I'm really excited to get to it. And yes, those are all the books that I acquired in the last few months, definitely quite a few, but a lot that I am really looking forward to reading when I get round to them. Please let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and if there are any ones that you really, really think I would like that you think I should start with soon. And I think that's all. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.